Hello everyone, it's Paul Tilly. Thanks for joining me here today. Today we're looking at section 1B, compound interest. Hello, welcome back. It's Paul Tilly. Now we're going to take a look at future value. Now, future value is the value that something is going to be in the future. What is the equivalent value of something in the future? So if we have an amount of money now, we might want to ask, well, how much is that going to be worth in the future given a certain amount of time and given a certain interest rate? So that's effectively what we're doing here is calculating the future value. And we're doing it in the context of compound interest. So section 8.2 looks at it in terms of compound interest. So let's take a look at some of the problems. Let's take a look at, look at problem number one. We'll start off with number one. Number one says, what is the maturity value of $5,000 invested at 3% compounded semi-annually for seven years? So we've got a, uh, a present value of $5,000. It is in. It is invested for uh, at three percent, and three percent is the uh, the nominal rate of interest, and it's compounded semi annual. Semi annually, and uh, we also. Note that it's for seven years. Seven years. So what we need to be able to do is to say, how much is that $5,000 going to be worth in seven years, given the circumstances where it's 3% rate of interest, and given the circumstances that that interest is compounded semi-annually? Well, the basic equation that we've learned for doing that is the future value equals the present value 1 plus i to the power of n. Now, we haven't got all of those calculated first. First, we need, to, we need to be able to identify what the PV is. We know that present value is $5,000. Okay? So that's PV. And then we want to know, we're looking for FV, so we don't know FV, which is the future value. Uh, the I, now in order to calculate the I, one of the things we have to do is to be able to use the, uh, the prescribed uh, rate. So we have the nominal rate. We have the nominal rate at 3%, and it's semi-annual. So what we have to do is take 3% and divide it by 2. Semi-annual means twice a year, so we divide that by 2. And that's 1.5% per period. In other words, this periodic rate is 1.5% per period. That's I. And then we got N. Uh, N is the figure here. And N relates to the number of compounding periods. Well, we know it's for seven years, but the compounds happen twice a year. So seven times two will give us 14 compounding periods. So all we need to do is put those numbers into the equation. So if V equals the present value of $5,000, one plus, and again, the idea is that it's I, and that's 1.5%, which is 0 0.015, uh, to the N, which in this case is 14. Now, we'll plug that into our calculators, and we will get there 5,000. Uh, sort of, um, 1.015 to the 14. And this will be $6,158.77. In other words, what we're saying is if we took $5,000, put it in the bank now, earning three, a nominal rate of 3% paid semi-annually, which is the equivalent of 1.5% per compounding, for seven years, which is the equivalent of 14 compoundings, because again, semi-annual, we will have, at the end of that period, $6,158.77. So that is the future value of that amount of money. So that's number one. Okay, let's take a look at number three. Number three is a good example for showing how this future value thing works. Um, number three says, 
What amount would $12,100 grow after three and a quarter years if it earned 2.5% compounded monthly? So let's take a look. Let's dissect that into its key components. The present value is $12,100. That's how much money we have there. The time is three and a quarter years, 3.25 years. And we'll notice that it's compounded monthly. And so that means that the number of compounds is 12, which is compounded monthly, times 3.25. And that comes to 39 compounds. In other words, it's, it's multiplied up in terms of the calculation 39 times. So that's time. Let's take a look next at interest. Uh, it's 2.5% um, interest. So when we think about 2.5% compounded monthly, what we have to do is find out the periodic rate. So we take the 2.5%, we divide it by 12, and that comes out to 0.21% per month. So eventually that's the per monthly rate. So all of those, we'll throw that into the formula now. So the future value formula is PB1 plus I to the N. So we put in the present value, 12,100. 1 plus i, and we have to convert that 0.21 to a decimal, so uh, 0 0.0021 is what that would be in, in percentage terms, in decimal terms, to the 39th power. We'll run that through our calculator, and we will get 13,123.04. In other words, what we're saying is that if we took 12,100 put it in the bank for three and a half years, compound it monthly at 2.5% rate of interest, at the end of the period we would have $13,123.04. So that's number, number three. I'm just going to take a look at number nine. We'll look at uh, part of number nine. Number nine, question number nine says, by calculating the maturity value of $100, invest it for one year at each rate, determine the rate of return the investor would prefer. So we have $100 being invested at various amounts. So let's take a look at the first situation here in number nine. Um, in A, 3% uh, compounded uh, monthly. Okay, so in this particular instance, um, 3% compounded monthly. We got to think of what our present value is. It is $100. We got to think about our, our time. And this is, uh, you know, it, it's only in there for a year. It is only in there for a year. But the fact of the matter is, is that one year times 12 compounds. In other words, 12 compounding periods or 12 compounds. And in terms of the rate, we take 3% and we know that it's compounded 12 times so 12, 3 divided by 12 would give you uh, the rate there at um, uh, the rate uh, uh, the, the prescribed rate and that's 0 0.0025 as a decimal so we simply plug those numbers into, we'll write out the if V equals PV um, <clears throat> 1 plus uh, I to the end. And the present value is $100. 1 plus the I now is 0 0.0025 to the end, in this case 12. So uh, we run the numbers on that, and that comes to 10304. So that's that's how much that will be worth. So if we put three, uh, $100 in the bank, 3% compounded monthly, at the end of the year you'd have $103.04. Uh, I'm just going to take a look at C as another example. You can take a look at the other ones yourself. C says 3.2% compounded semi-annually. Okay, so we got 3.2% compounded semi-annually. Let's take a look at it. The PV 
is 100 as it was in the last case the time the time in this case it's, it's one year yes but it's two compounds so that's uh, the multiplier in this case would be two in terms of the time <coughs> And the interest rate, uh, that time is equivalent of n, in this case, that will give us n. Um, interest would be, um, again, it's 3.2% is the, the nominal rate. You divide it by 2 because it's semi-annual, and that's 1.6%, which is 0 0.0016. So we'll plug that into the equation. So I won't rewrite the equation here. I'll just say F equals 100, uh, 1 plus um, 0 0.0016 to the power of 2. Uh, just pulling it right out of there. And this is 103.22. So again, the basic problem is to take a look at it and say which one would you prefer and obviously just looking at two of these, there are four there, but I'm only going to look at two. Uh, the semi-annual, 3.2% semi-annual is the better of these two that I've looked at. So that's number nine. I think it's important that you go through all of those. There's a lot of good examples there. I don't know if you need to go through them all, but all the answer problems you can take a look at. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks very much for watching.